what is up everybody Aaron here with AV Astronomy welcome back and if this is your first time watching thanks for stopping by last week's video I showed you guys the results from my trip down to st. George Island Florida and if you noticed I was using the star adventurer pro pack by Skywatcher so today's video I wanted to talk a little more a little bit more about that product um, it was my first time using it last week, but I learned a lot just from that first time use and I got a couple tips I think that could be helpful to you guys and uh, Helping you get some good results from that setup today's video We're gonna cover how to use this thing just on the go, you know completely portable minimalist setup just Camera lens or a small telescope like the red cat 51 or something similar and the star adventurer and that's it and I'm going to show you guys how I got that result here. Okay, so let's talk about what you're going to need at an absolute minimum to get this thing going. You're going to need a sturdy tripod. You're also going to need a ball head, okay? And this is going to come off of here and I'll show you a minute where to put this thing. Of course, you need your camera. In this case, I'm using the Canon 77D. This is HA modded, so it is really good at picking up H alpha data. And I have the 18 to 200 millimeter uh, zoom lens on here. Some helpful accessories, a green laser pointer. You will also need an intervalometer. And that's just a fancy term for this device that basically sets up your, this is like APT in a remote, okay? This is your imaging cap, image capturing hardware, so to speak, okay? Real easy to use. Um, and I'll actually go through it when we get set up here tonight and how to use this thing, but. Uh, these are, to me, the absolute minimum items you want to have for this setup to get some good results. So now that I've shown you that, let's put it all together. First thing you want to put on here is the wedge. And of course, you got a built-in level on this thing. So be sure to level this before you go any further. You want to position this mounting plate onto the bottom of the mount here and it does come with an allen wrench to tighten this down just slide that on in there like that tighten it down here is where you adjust the latitude of the wedge okay you're going to need to check your location uh, if you're traveling check it on an app or just google your location and find out what the latitude needs to be i know for this location where i am it's 30 about 31 degrees so i'm going to go ahead and adjust that right there okay and then just lock this down so let's unscrew this here so we can slide this in and i don't have it sitting very high i try to get it low center of gravity um, it doesn't really specify that but just seems logical to me to do it that way now you get your ball head this is your counterweight shaft let's go ahead and put that in as well adjust the ball head to the section of the sky that you want to image so go ahead and adjust that okay so we've got this all mounted up let's check balance i'm gonna show you guys how we do that so you need to release this clutch right here and you can check the balance let's see what we got it's it's quite bottom heavy so let's slide this up okay so got a slight still a little, little heavier pull than i'd like let's there we go. You see that? Just a 
slight pull there is what we're going for. I'm gonna inch. I'm gonna inch this up just a little more. There we go. All right, guys. So that's balanced in my book anyway. That's what I'm going with. I'm gonna show you guys um, looking through the polar scope here. You want to go ahead, and this is personal preference, but when you look inside this polar scope, you're going to see a diagram that looks just like this okay and it's gonna appear like lopsided so you're gonna need to rotate that right ascension from being upright to this way to get it in the proper position you want the zero at the 12 o'clock position and you want the six at the six o'clock position so that's what we're gonna do right now we're gonna adjust this thing then the best way to do it is during the day uh, look for the edge of a house down the street or a telephone pole, something that's perpendicular line, edges of homes. And I know you're ballparking it doing this, but that's the method I use, and it seems to work really well. I get good results, so um, I'm, that's what I do. But anyway, that's what we're going to do right now. Okay, there we go. See that? There we go. See that diagram there? There we go. Tighten this down. Every time I put my hand out here, it just gets in the way. We want that parallel with the edge of the house, as close as you can get it, okay? Okay, this is the clutch I was talking about that I loosened and then tightened, this black ring right here, to have this now at this angle. And you're gonna leave it here, okay? <laughs> Once you get it here, uh, you don't wanna mess with it, okay? Because when you polar align later, you've already got that step knocked out of the way. The next thing you're gonna wanna do is the actual polar alignment. I can show you guys while we got some light here. This is an intervalometer. Pump it on. You've got self, bulb, interval, number, and then if you want it to have a beep or not. So let's go through the first section which it's already on self timer mode. All right, so to go advance to the next um, section there, just arrow over to the right, okay? Here we have bulb. So this is the time exposures that you want okay uh, let's say we're you arrow over to seconds and let's say we want to do I'm sorry that's minutes let's say we want to do three minute or two minute subs right so I've got this on two minute subs hit enter go over to the left to the interval interval is the amount of time between each image that you take I usually do about three seconds it gives your camera time to process that image and move on to the next okay so it's, it's I don't think it's a big deal, but I usually do that two or three seconds on this. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that Here on over to seconds and let's go three seconds. You can do two whatever Enter and then go over to number. This is the number of frames that you're gonna take. Let's say you want to do You know 40 whatever sub frames. There you go hit enter and then the last one is do you want it to beep or not? If you're hanging around and you want to know when it's taking a shot I guess you can leave that on but I leave that off all you got to do is plug this into the side of the camera on my camera it's right here on the left side right there and just plug that in boom uh, it'd probably be a good idea to get some velcro double-sided velcro and just have this on your tripod I just kind of let mine dangle no pun intended but anyway so once you get that in there press start you got your target your polar lined you're good to go just wanted to show you guys actually how to use that so we're gonna wait until it gets a little bit darker and then I will show you guys firsthand how I polar align this thing and also some things to watch out for okay so there's a couple things you want to do once you get the camera mounted on here you're gonna want to ballpark this mount you draw an imaginary line right here pointing at Polaris that's the first thing the second thing you want to do is you want to have this camera already pointed in the general direction of your target and again a great tool to use is something like the skyview app like this app here uh, it's fantastic it will show you stars constellations deep sky objects you name it so go ahead and knock those two things out all right now what you want to do is take a look through this polar scope and I'm going to show you what this looks like when you're viewing this through here and getting Polaris lined up. There is an app called PS Align that uses the same grid as your Star Adventurer. It will show you exactly where Polaris needs to be and you can see it's just to the right of the 
zero degree at 12 o'clock mark, the zero mark, just to the right and slightly closer to the lower band. You see those three bands, the three rings there? It's just above that inner ring and just to the right. So you would take this information and place Polaris on that same location inside your polar scope and that's it. I mean your polar line. There is some initial setup you'll need to do for your location on this app, but once you get it set up, this app is awesome. Next thing you're gonna wanna do is attach this polar scope. And if you roll this dial up here, you can see that's how you, that turns it on. You can control the brightness with that. I just crank mine all the way up. So let's go ahead and attach that here to the mount. So there's a slot right in here where you wanna position this right on top. Now there's an adapter piece I had to attach to this uh, that comes with it with the Pro Pack, but you just wedge it right in here, okay, and it'll wedge firmly. That will illuminate the polar scope. Okay, so now that we've got this in the general area, I'm gonna use my green laser dot pointer to make sure I've got this thing pointed at the right star. So, while I'm looking through the polar scope here, I'm gonna be holding this steady pointed right at Polaris. You can adjust this here for focus so you can better see the diagram. You use the azimuth knobs here, just like you would on a larger mount. You screw one one way, you gotta back it out and screw one the other way, okay? Clockwise, counterclockwise to change, and you'll see the mount move as I do this. Maybe you won't, but I know you're hearing all those crickets. It's ridiculous how loud they are, isn't it? Man, it is summertime. But anyway, so you move these azimuth knobs very subtly, okay, to get Polaris lined up exactly where you saw it in that app, okay? All right, that is, that is it. That's pretty close. So, it didn't take me too long because I've done this a few times, so it may take you a little time. But now I'm going to click this on the celestial tracker mode, which is right here, and then you would engage your intervalometer. Remember those settings we created earlier? Turn this thing on, turn your camera on. Um, you may want to do a test shot. Make sure you're, you know, in the area or ballpark of what you're trying to image. Now, if this is, if you're new to this and you're not sure exactly where, you know, or you're not exactly sure what settings to use, what shutter speed, what, what aperture, I've got a great video here called what is the exposure matrix that'll help you out with that, okay? So do a test shot, make sure you got it centered on your target. If you need to make some adjustments, this knob that is on the tracker here is especially useful as it pans east to west very smoothly. Of course, you can always adjust the ball head, but if you make adjustments here, and even on this here, I mean, you gotta be real gentle. If you make any adjustments to this, I'd say it's good practice to go back and check and make sure you didn't bump the star out of its position. You didn't bump Polaris out, okay? Once you've got that done, you've made your adjustments, you take your test shot, it's centered, it's focused. So we've got that aligned, you've got this engaged, you're in focus, your test shot looks good. Now it's just a matter of bringing up the intervalometer, turning it back on. You already got the settings set in there. It's good to go. You hit engage, start, and that is it. The rest is handled by the camera. It does the rest of the work for you. And I hope you guys can hear me okay, despite the ridiculous amount of crickets chirping tonight. But this is every night for like the next three to four months because that's just how it is down here. That is how I set up my star adventurer for astrophotography without an auto guider well guys that concludes the video if you have any questions comments about this particular mount please feel free to put them in the comment section and i'll do the best i can to answer those questions for you also if you ever have any uh, concerns or questions about astrophotography in general feel free to shoot me a question down in the comments below and i'll do the best i can to address those for you and as always, if you are interested in any of the gear that I use or recommend, I've got some links in the description uh, that will help you get started on the right foot. I'll also put some links to some videos that will be helpful to you, like using Stellarium and the Exposure Matrix. Those will be in the description as well. Guys, as always, thanks for all your support and for watching. And until next time, clear skies.